At the start of the movie, a father-daughter duo climb up the troll hills in western Norway as a hobby. After they reach the top, the father, Tobias, tells his young daughter Nora about the folklore of the legendary trolls. Apparently, these mythical creatures wandered the earth several thousand years ago, but one day, they were cast into stone when they came into contact with sunlight. Tobias, a renowned folklorist, believes that trolls still wander around the mountains of Norway, and his daughter is fascinated by it. Fast forward 20 years into the future. Nora has outgrown her belief in magic and has instead turned to science. Now, she works as a paleontologist. After working for almost six months at an archaeological site, she finally discovers a mysterious fossil. Elated that her hard work finally paid off, Nora celebrates her recent finding with her team. In the nearby Dovra Mountains, rapid construction is taking place to build a metro station. The workers are busy drilling into the mountain and setting up explosives to create a passageway for the project. Meanwhile, a crowd of actors activists is protesting against the construction, shouting that the government should let the mountain live. Ignoring their protests, the chief sets off the explosives, blowing the mountain into smithereens. He makes hard eye contact with the activists when he hits the button, too. Savage. He and the workers then go inside the Dovra cave to check, but shockingly, they hear a loud roar. Moments after, they feel the ground shake, and an ancient, mythical creature rises from the rocky depths of the mountain. Horrified, the workers run for their lives, but the falling mountain debris eventually seals their fate. Shortly after, the news of the incident reaches the Norwegian Armed Forces headquarters in Oslo. The general decides to send an aircraft to get clear images of what really happened at the site. He then gives instructions to alert the Prime Minister. Next, we see the Norwegian Prime Minister and her advisor, Andreas, heading to the military base. On their way, the Minister of Defense updates them on the situation and reveals that over 50 people died in the incident. He then displays some pictures of Ground Zero and with a closer view, we can see gigantic holes in the ground. Andreas says they look like footprints but he's not qualified to have an opinion. Meanwhile, Nora is still celebrating with her colleagues on the occasion of her groundbreaking discovery. She begins to give a speech, but suddenly, a military helicopter arrives. Then, a soldier comes out and tells Nora that she's been summoned by the Prime Minister in Oslo. Wasting no time, she gets on the chopper and heads towards the military base. After her arrival, she is escorted by Andreas to a room full of government officials. Nora joins them as they discuss the current situation. The officials presume that the destruction was caused by some kind of gas, but Nora says otherwise. After reviewing the footprint image closely, she suspects it could be a prehistoric animal that has risen from the mountains. Andreas says it could be supernatural, but he's not qualified to have an opinion. However, the government officials simply mock Nora, stating that this isn't one of her fossil research cases. They also rule out the possibility of an animal being behind all of this. Just then, Sigrid, a computer genius who also works for the Norwegian Armed Forces, barges in and tells the group that she has managed to retrieve a video from the incident. When she plays it, the officials notice an approximately 150-foot-tall figure coming out of the Dovra cave. This finally convinces them that something colossal, probably a monster, has arrived in Norway. Elsewhere, in a remote area called Lesia, an elderly couple sits for afternoon tea when they hear a distant roar. Soon after, their table begins shaking, causing the nearby utensils to fall off. The couple thinks it is an earthquake, so they quickly hide under their safety vault. Once everything is settled down, they leave the vault, only to find their house shattered and torn into debris. Meanwhile, Nora tells the Prime Minister that she is ready to look into the Dover incident. The other officials agree, and she is assigned as a scientific advisor. After the meeting, the PM's advisor, Andreas, informs Nora about the Lesia incident, and the two quickly fly a chopper to the site. During their flight, they have a bit of small talk. Andreas properly introduces himself, and then asks Nora why she became a paleontologist. The latter replies that she has always loved nature, ever since she was a child. She also shares that her father, Tobias, was a folklore expert, but he eventually lost touch with reality, as his beliefs went too far. At one point, his condition became so bad that he had to be admitted to a hospital. Andreas then confides in Nora that he always wanted to be a writer, and that he's working on a story about a monk that rips his own head off and throws it at enemies to bite them, and I honestly just found this really funny. <laughs> 
Once Nora and Andreas reach the site, they are taken aback by the destruction. Soon, they are greeted by Captain Chris Holm, Special Operations Command. Chris briefs the two about the situation, explaining that the creature continued its track two miles south into the mountains. But although they did a sweep of the area, they couldn't find anything. It's almost as if the gigantic creature disappeared into thin air. Following this, the trio interviews the elderly couple, who are still shaken up by the incident. The wife reveals that she did not see anything. However, she did hear a strange howling sound. The sound was terrifying, much like that of King Kong. It was also mournful and sad. Unfortunately, the information is inconclusive, so Nora is left to inspect the surroundings by herself. Suddenly, she smells a strange odor that leads her into one of the giant footprints. Nora then scans the area for any clues, but strangely, there are no biological signs in it. It's almost as if the creature is not a living organism at all. Now, with all evidence leading to a dead end, Nora decides to seek help from her estranged father, who is living in a remote mountain alone. Nora, Captain Chris, and Andreas fly to his place in a chopper. Their first encounter is a bit hostile, but Tobias eventually calms down and takes them inside his house. Surprisingly, even after all these years, he is still researching the mythical creatures known as trolls. After a while, the group shows him the video that Sigrid retrieved earlier. Tobias is taken aback by what he sees, and he starts murmuring, they are here. Confused, Nora wants a scientific explanation, not just some folklore, to find a solution to whatever they are dealing with. Daddy, stop talking about trolls and tell me about this troll. However, Tobias stands with his theory and explains that the trolls went extinct because of the Christianization of Norway. He adds that he was about to reveal the truth until he was belittled as a maniac. He then grabs his bag and says that they are going on an adventure. Next, we see Nora, her colleagues, and Tobias flying on a chopper to a certain site. After a while, they arrive at the said site, and Tobias eagerly begins to look around the surroundings. He notices that the topography has been completely changed. Meanwhile, Nora gets a whiff of the same strange smell, which she calls hypernature. I have no idea what she means by this, and it's never explained, so that's that. As she scans around the place, suddenly, she sees a large figure waking up behind her. It is the mammoth troll that has camouflaged himself to blend in with his surroundings. Andreas and the others also notice this and quickly start the chopper. Fortunately, the group escapes in the nick of time. Dude, that troll has a tail. Once they reach a safe location, they go live on the internet and show the video to the government officials in Oslo. Now, everyone is bound to believe that the trolls are real. Shortly after, the Prime Minister arranges for a military operation led by Captain Chris. Soon, hundreds of soldiers gather around with the best artillery in the country and prepare to take down the giant. As they prepare for the duel, Tobias and Nora have a heartwarming father-daughter moment, bonding for the first time in years. And meanwhile, Andreas tells Captain Chris that he knows all about army gear because he plays Call of Duty. Then, the troll arrives, and the military goes buck wild. However, despite their best efforts, the troll doesn't seem to be affected at all. He appears to have rejected generation powers, and can also smell the blood in his victims. After killing one of the soldiers, Tobias stands up and attempts to calm the creature down. Arms outstretched, he seems to be successful initially. At the same time, another vehicle arrives and pummels the troll with several bullets. As it turns and squashes the people inside, Tobias is inadvertently thwacked with the troll's tail, sending him flying and crashing to the ground. He tries to say something to Nora, but sadly, passes away before he can elaborate on his words. That night, a devastated Nora goes through her father's journal, trying to figure out how to stop the troll, or at least understand him better. After hours of reading, she learns that the trolls used to throw boulders at churches as they hated the sound of bells. Later, she shares the information with the officials, claiming that they have to think out of the box. The Minister of Defense doesn't want to move forward with such a far-fetched, superstitious plan, but since they have no better option, the General and the Prime Minister give her the green light. In the next scene, we see four military helicopters, each attached with a large church bell, moving towards the troll. The plan appears to work at first, and the troll becomes visibly weak. But after a while, he gets used to it and destroys most of the choppers. With this, Nora's idea of attacking the monster with church bells fails spectacularly, causing even more massacre and destruction. However, the troll does save a small child from his imminent demise, showcasing once again that the beast appears to feel emotions 
friends. To make matters worse, at this point, news outlets from around the world have picked up the story and are broadcasting it. In the aftermath, the Prime Minister gives a speech on TV to try and calm the nation. At first, she apologizes for her cabinet's incompetence and then declares a state of emergency. She also urges the residents of Oslo and other surrounding areas to immediately evacuate, as for some reason the troll appears to be headed straight for the capital. Meanwhile, due to her failure, Nora loses her seat at the table. On the other hand, Andreas learns that the government plans to bomb Oslo in hopes of destroying the troll. He has some thoughts on this, but he's still not qualified to have an opinion, so he resigns from his position. Both Nora and Andreas then leave the headquarters. In no time, thousands of people start queuing up to leave the city. Andreas and Nora are also among them. The latter is still gutted that she couldn't find a solution to the troll problem and decides to take one last look at her father's journal. Lo and behold, she finds a clue. She notices the word Sinding written multiple times in the journal. Andreas tells her that Sinding is actually a prince living in the royal palace in Oslo. How did Nora not know about that? He apparently is one of the wealthiest guys in the country. Hearing this, Nora insists that they turn the car around and head back, believing a clue lies in the royal palace in Oslo. After a while, they arrive at the palace and meet Reichard Sinding, who also appears to be waiting for them. Then, he takes them inside and finally reveals the truth about the trolls of Norway. As it turns out, Tobias was right all along. These mythical creatures actually used to walk the country's lands. At the palace, Nora and Andreas are taken deep into the underground tunnels, where Sinding reveals that he and the other officials destroyed Tobias's life in order to protect their secrets. When Nora's dad got too close to the truth, Sinding himself arranged for the old man to be committed to a mental health hospital to protect the secret. And that secret happens to be the skeletal remains of a troll family underground. The royal palace was built on top of the troll king's cave after the Christians massacred his family and left him for dead inside the mountain. Here, we get to know that the troll which is wreaking havoc around the country is actually the troll king. This explains why the giant is heading towards Oslo in the first place. He's been trying to return home. Sinding continues to explain that nothing is more important to trolls than family, and during the Christianization of Norway, the troll king was lured to the Dovre mountain and imprisoned. Of course, the earlier explosives let him out, and now he's heading back to Oslo to try and reunite with his children. It's actually quite sad. Nora and Andreas are shocked to learn the truth. They are even more terrified when they see the skeletal remains of the troll family. When Nora shines her UV light on the bones, she notices that they sizzle. This is when she realizes that the trolls are indeed sensitive to light and comes up with a plan. Bilbo Baggins was on to something after all, goddammit. Next, Nora asks Sinding to lend her the biggest vehicle he's got, so he provides her with the Queen's favorite pickup truck. After this, she phones Captain Chris and briefs him about the plan. She wants to surround the Troll King with tanning beds and expose him to UV lights. While Chris calls on some fellow soldiers to make the Troll Trap, including the one black character in this entire movie who is there for no more than tokenism, Andreas asks his friend Sigrid back at the government facility to delay the Oslo mission missile bombing plan. Fortunately, Sigrid turns out to be a hacking genius, and she successfully stops the fighter plane from firing missiles at the creature. With Oslo still intact, and the plan very much alive, Andreas and Nora jump into action. At first, they remove a large tarp from the back of the truck, and reveal a troll child's skull they found underground. They then drive away, luring the incoming giant towards the UV light trap. A while later, the troll inadvertently smashes the skull, and realizes that he has no family left. Enraged, he then turns his attention to Nora and Andreas, determined to make them pay. Elsewhere, at the military base, Sigrid is eventually caught red-handed while she's tampering with the missile system. However, the general commands her to abort the missile plan when they confirm that there are civilians nearby. Meanwhile, Nora and Andreas somehow manage to lure the troll to their designated spot. Wasting no time, military vehicles surround him and begin shining massive UV lights on him. The plan works, and the troll slowly burns to death. However, seeing the giant suffer her. Nora has a last minute change of heart. She realizes it's wrong to kill the creature, so she turns off the lights, which for some reason aren't being guarded by the military guys, and tries to save his life. She then urges the troll to go to the mountains where he can be safe, but unfortunately, it's too late. There's a moment of tranquility until suddenly sunrise hits, prompting the troll king to collapse in a heap just before he completely turns to stone. Nora reaches out and touches him gently. This thing looks kind of like my dad, Nora thinks. While everyone else is rejoicing, Andreas and Nora start wondering whether more trolls could be hiding deep inside Norway's mountains. Nora then decides they should call this area Tobias Boulder. The Prime Minister shows up and says to Nora that she doesn't know what to say. She then proceeds to do, to do exactly that. She literally says nothing to our hero. 
In the final scene, the movie jumps over to Dover Mountain, where we can see a whole bunch of stones move. Suddenly, another troll rises from the rubble, ready to unleash hell on the people of Norway. Look out, boys! It's troll time! Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.